Hey, I'm Robert X. Goffin. Welcome to Real Black TV. We've got Morris Chestnut on today's show. He has a new film, Perfect Holiday, coming to theaters soon. Lights, camera, action, it's on. New black film revolution born. Move with shakers, big and little filmmakers. Let's make a movie today, see where it take us. Halle Berry, Denzel, and Janie. Terrence Star with Mike D and Spike Lee. Brand new filmmaker born every day. Put a camera in his hand and let him lead the way. Let me get an Oscar, let me get an Emmy. Real black woke up the filmmaker Emmy. Whether digital, 8 millimeter, 35. Let's make the movies that can open the eyes. Let's tell the stories that need to be told. Make them laugh, make them cry for the young, for the old. Come on, let's Shake it, make it, and make movies real black. I really like the way you do me. Hi, I was wondering if I could. Mom! Oh! Oh. She's a single mom <laughs> with three kids. You know what I want more than anything? What? Just a nice, normal man, even a not so nice man. <laughs> He's a single Santa <laughs> with an oversized helper. They should have been perfect for each other. <laughs> They're looking at hey. But his big line... Yeah, so, you know, I was, uh, sell office of supplies. ...is a lie. Do so you ever need anything? I'm sure I'll, I'll need whatever you have by way of office supplies. But you work in a mall, dog, part-time. Hey, I'm Robert X. Goffin, and this is Real Black TV. And with me is Morris Chestnut. And, you know, we're a TV show, but we're also on YouTube, so you've got a lot of female fans out there that I'm sure want to hear your voice. Hey, so. what's up? All the fans and everybody on YouTube. Now, your new movie is called Perfect Holiday. Yeah, Perfect Holiday. There's a lot of Christmas movies on the horizon. What establishes this from the, the rest? Wow. You know what? It's, um, you know, I think there are a lot of good movies out there. You know, obviously, this Christmas is a, is a good movie. I think, you know, our movie is is one that you can definitely bring the whole family to. You know, not that you couldn't, you know, with the others, but ours in particular, you know, it ranges, the age range for, you know, kids would be entertained, you know, because we have, you know, three kids in a movie who do a phenomenal job. And, you know, adults and grandparents would be entertained as well. Ho, 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 little girl. And what would you like for Christmas besides everything? I don't want anything for me. Just for my mommy. Really? What's your name, little girl? I'm Emily. That's my mom. <laughs> Which yeah. one, though? The one on the right? Yeah. Uh, Santa? Santa? Now, much like Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks or Dorothy Dandridge and Harry Belafonte, uh -huh. you and Gabrielle Union share the screen very often. Is this a calculated move in your career that you two work together a lot? And if so, why? Well, I just think it's something that the, the studios recognize. You know, she and I have a good chemistry together. And the thing about that is, you know, um, <clears throat> with Gabrielle, aside from, you know, her, her talent and her good looks, you know, she's easy to get along with. You know, she, you know, when you're working on a movie set for 12 and 14 hour days, you know, you want to have somebody there that, you know, that you, that you get along with, that can make you laugh and you just have a good time. And Gabrielle is that. As an actor of color, what obstacles, if any, have you had to endure while climbing that ladder of success? Wow, you know what? This is the thing. I mean, every actor has to has to endure some ob obstacles. You know, some more than others for whatever reasons. Um, you know, um, just when I started out, when I started out, I think really the only two black male leads making movies at that time were, you know, Denzel Washington and Eddie Murphy. You know, now you have Denzel. You know, Jamie Foxx, Will Smith. You know, Martin Lawrence. You know, so and Charlie Murphy. And, and Charlie Murphy. And Charlie Murphy. So you know, I, I think that the opportunities have definitely increased from when I first started. And what role, if any, have you never chanced to play that you'd like to at some point during your career? Yeah, you know what? That's that's a good. I mean, people ask me that question a lot, and that's a good question. But this is the thing, you know. You, I don't really know what that is because it depends, you know, on the context of the whole script. Because like eight years ago, if somebody would have came to me and said, "Hey, Morris, I got this great part for you, man. It's about it's about this pimp." that wants to be a rapper. You'd be like, a pimp wants to be a rapper? What was that about? But then you read, you know, Hustle and Flow, and, you know, it gets Terrence Howard a, 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 you know, Academy Award nomination. So it depends on the context of the script. And is there anything you'd like to add? Any upcoming projects? Right. Yeah. Shout outs? Yeah, yeah. Well, I produced and starred in my first movie for uh, Sony Screen Gems called Not Easily Broken, and that'll be out next year. So you guys be waiting for that one. All right. Morris Chestnut. My new team is the 76ers. I don't care what's going on. I don't care who's getting fired. My new team, the 76ers, I'm taking them to the championship. Okay? That's what I do.
I am the darker brother. I, too, am America. I want you to try out for the debate team. Are you sure you want somebody like me? No. That's why you're trying out. Gentlemen and lady, debate is combat, but your weapons are words. In a time of change, he taught them to find their strength. Dad, I made the debate team. No. Tolson can be a bit of a rebel. It's extreme for my taste. Debate is blood sport. You must destroy your opponent, not only verbally, but physically. I am here to help you to find and keep your righteous mind. When our nation was in need, he inspired them to give us hope. The time for justice is always right now. She's good. Everybody knows he's been running around, stirring up trouble. Get down. One of them's liable to get hurt if you catch my drift. Mr. Tolson! Since it's clear that you have no evidence, I suggest you let him go. Are you threatening me, boy? I wouldn't do that. But I cannot speak for those people outside. Let him go! Let him go! Let him go! This game. Looks like somebody opened it already. Not me. Dear Mr. Tolson, we wish to extend an invitation to debate Harvard Crimson. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be one of the first Negro colleges in America to ever debate a white college. If we defeat them, we defeat the best. What's the matter? You afraid? From director Denzel Washington and producer Oprah Winfrey comes the story. This debate is stirring up a lot of excitement. It's going to be broadcast all over America. Of the team that got the world to listen. Sign your life. This is WNBC Radio bringing to you live tonight's history-making debate. Academy Award winner, Denzel Washington. Academy Award winner, Forrest Whitaker. My message to you is to never quit. The Great Debaters. See that one kid hit me? <laughs> yeah, he hit you with the holy field. Oh, good. Bad kid, man. Yeah, except for this one little girl. Yeah, what she want? All she wanted was for some dude to come up to her mother and just give her a compliment. Yeah, it seems like her parents split up a few years back, and I uh, guess her mother's been real sad lately. Was her mama fine? <laughs> well, you know, I have to say she is probably one of the most beautiful women I think I've ever seen. We're here today with actor Faison Love, who stars in Perfect Holiday. Faison. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. <laughs> so tell us about your role in Perfect Holiday. Um, I play a um, mall elf with a um, very good actor, um, Morris Chestnut. Yes. And he falls in love with a very good actress, um, Gabrielle Union. Yes. These are very good actors. Yes. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I play a mall. A mall elf. A mall elf. Who's aspiring to be Santa. It's your turn. Go see Santa. Who are you? I'm Santa's number one elf. More like numbers one through ten. <laughs> <laughs> nice tights. Hey, your mama. And your mama, too. How would you say this differs from your previous roles? Because you usually tend to do comedies. Would you say this one was different from previous projects that you worked on? Uh, yeah. Uh, I never played an elf. Yeah. I was in the movie Elf. Never played an elf before. You're not writing songs the consumers want to hear. We want to hear songs like, The Girl with the Big Legs and Leonel Street. That's what people want to hear. Which muffins are mine, man? None of them. You didn't pay for no muffins. <laughs> oh, my bad. You just going to take my muffin? What you looking at, man? I think that's her. Her who? The little girl's mother from yesterday. That's her. Oh, yeah. Someone wants a compliment. Give me a jacket. Hmm? Give me a jacket. Give me a shoe. Give me a jacket. Faison, I understand you have some really strong opinions about the writer's strike. So let our viewers know how you feel about it. Uh, the writer's strike? Yeah, I just feel that uh, it's the wrong time for a writer's strike uh, because there's so many other families that are affected by it. There's the, the painters, there's the 
the the um, electricians. There's the the people who really really work hard every day on a set, a film set, a television set that don't get a residual effect. And right now, the Thanksgiving and um, Christmas, those are their their winter months. They really they they those are the, the months they got to win because they have families that need toys to have a perfect holiday. And you can't have a perfect holiday if there's a fucking writer's strike. It's ridiculous. You're right. And there's so many things that are more important than that. I mean, there's, you know, the, the war. We have troops over overseas that are not going to come home this holiday. I mean, there's a, so many, there's, there's children dying just, gun. There's so many things that are important. Then there's the writers. A joke writer? Come on. I bet you're wondering right now, what is Real Black? That was Real Black. Real Black is a Philadelphia-based production company dedicated to promoting African-American film. In addition to this show, we also host two film screenings per month here in the city. You can check out our website to join our mailing list or look for our full page ad each month and rolling out weekly. Here's a clip from one of our upcoming shows. Remember back in 88 when niggas was getting rushed and, and snatched up and, and getting played out? Stolen. Them days is coming back, kid. In 1993, rap group emerged from the slums of Shaolin and took the hip-hop world by storm. Their legacy would span over 13 years, selling more than 20 million albums. Their talents brought them success, but their music made them legends. So we took our negative ways and actions to put this into a positive I don't give a fuck. The woo woo is the way. The tang, that's the, that's the slang. slang. It's the, it's the sport sport style. Style. Rockefeller and the world, man. Brooklyn you, Brooklyn you represent. Ain't nothing changed with the clan, you know what I'm saying? It's still one love, one family united to death, you know what I'm saying? This is my whole fucking life. Our MCs are incredible, so we about to blow the fuck up. The world wasn't ready for that yet. Maybe we wasn't ready for that either, I don't know. They murfed the industry, man. They murfed it. I'm gonna say what he said, so you can understand. He said, I'm waiting to die, Vine. Late this afternoon, ODB, whose real name was Russell Jones, collapsed in a recording studio. They made people from Staten Island and from New York feel that anything is possible because these dudes came from nothing. They genuinely love the craft of MCN. He said, maybe it takes for me to die for all of them to come back together. And he said that. Woo, the story of the Wu-Tang Clan coming soon. You never gonna find 10 ill niggas into the next millennium. First of all, I'm a Temple grad. T.U. Represent T.U. I gotta represent for T.U. I actually lived in the dorms at one time and long time ago, many moons ago. I actually lived in the dorms and um, I was always coming out, you know what I mean, to go to the bathroom and I kept seeing this guy in a, like a yoga robe. Like, you know what I'm saying? He had like a big robe on, like Yoda or Rocky Balboa. You know, he was so, he was so light skinned. I was like, yo, I can't tell if that's a white or black dude. Years from now, when this is like a really, a, a, just a global phenomenon and you look back and just say, what do these guys do? If, they, if you just sit back sometimes at some of our meetings, our creative meetings, you would just be like, wow, these guys are having like a really good time. That's how really good things are done. And then we became friends and one of the things I remember he said to me, which kind of set up the tone for our friendship. When I said, yo, man, every time I come in the hallway, I see you. He said, well, every time I'm in the hallway, that means you're in the hallway. <laughs> that, 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 that's what he said to me. Basically, I met Atif on a set of a student film called The Ultimate Rush. Um, I was forced to ride with him in the car. So he was actually listening to Tupac, and I just mentioned uh, the Me Against the World album was underrated. And, you know, like, like I said earlier, you know, ever since then, I haven't been able to shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> How to get entertainment basically was a concept I uh, came up with about 
I would say back in the late 90s, after reading the book Revelations, I actually came across, um, you know, the word Armageddo. Actually, it's called Armageddo in the book of Revelation. And basically, it just it's like uh, means destruction. And basically, it's just kind of like I like the concept. And since I started getting into entertainment, I wanted to have a company that pretty much specialized in entertainment, but also entertainment that awakened the mind. The projects that pretty much had some kind of social emphasis, you know, on it. So, like I said, my longtime friend here, he became my partner. And Mike, right here, my associate, he's actually associate. He has his own group called Osamo. So basically from there, we've started doing plays, we started doing movies, we, we traveled, and in the process, we also bonded as friends. But our first successful project was The Negro Zone. It's a 30-minute short on the stereotypes of black men. It's a comedy. Submitted for your approval. Three average African-American males about to embark on a normal day. Or are they? <laughs> on cable, it's the 17 film festivals, it's won awards. We're still traveling with it now. In fact, we'll be up and down the East Coast this spring, again, to different uh, colleges, different high schools, um, just spreading the word. With the college tour, we've been going to uh, Cheney University, Lincoln University, um, Virginia Union. We're pretty much going up and down the seaboard, and basically what we do is we show the film and we do a workshop about stereotypes. I want everybody welcome to the stage, and y'all know him by. J to the is a, M to the is a. L this is a new venue like almost for filmmaking where you almost have like, you, like you'd have a traveling circus or a traveling uh, zoo or whatever. Uh, we, we're basically traveling filmmakers, which is, you know, a, a, a good experience for uh, young um, filmmakers like ourselves that are not caught up in the syndicate of Hollywood and want to do more independent art. We do get to meet some students who want to be future filmmakers or actors and actresses, uh, music producers and so forth, who approach us and we usually network afterwards. Oh God, please don't hurt me, I'm a poor college student. Oh, I mean, I may grade hard, but I ain't gonna hurt you. This is Chemistry 1865. I'm Mr. Richard Brown. Creativity is a constant process. I mean, a creative mind is always creating. And basically, even with this tour, it's just something that basically we stumbled upon. Someone asked us one time and said, listen, would you want to do a workshop at an NAACP convention? And we did that. So basically, um, we said, fine, let's start, I start pitching to colleges. And also, like you said, this is another way of um, distribution because you're getting your film in front of people who otherwise would have never heard of it. And you're also increasing your fan base. When people see this, say, you know what? I remember those guys. So years later, when other projects are being made, they say, I remember that. I've decided I need more. More? More of a man. Computer Love is a story of Quay Reed, who after his engagement falls through, turns to the internet to meet women. It's actually based on a story that Mike came up with. Then I said, you know what, Mike? I can lend some authenticity to a man who's pretty much been on the internet meeting women from Maine to Virginia. <laughs> so pretty much, I can add some real stuff Maine. to it. Who are you? I'm one sexy Shonda. Child, you got my picture. No, 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 the woman I'm supposed to be? She looks like this. See? on the inside. So we put up a script together and it was hilarious. I mean, people pretty much felt the script. Then we shot a promotional trailer, which people like to, in fact, people think a movie's always done when they watch it, but it's not done. It's actually a promotional trailer. So, but it's a comedy, romantic comedy, internet dating. We plan to shoot it this spring, which would be 2008. Mm. Are you serious? What, I gotta feed my baby. How you doing? Independent filmmaking and through technology has gotten a lot easier to do and the quality of it is actually comparable to a lot of Hollywood big budget pictures, um, you know, minus the special effects. But uh, realistically, people are kind of overpaying for Hollywood movies. Um, in Philadelphia, you have a really good chance to, to work outside the syndicate and actually produce film um, for a fraction of the cost and actually have talent and opportunity for uh, a lot more people. I look at Philadelphia as a place, definitely a place with a lot of talent, definitely a place where you can make things happen, and from there the sky's the limit. That's my philosophy. Damn, that sounds like talent to me. story.
history of the Wu-Tang Clan coming soon. We gonna rock the rap industry. We gonna everybody up. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Lyra Respect for Real Black, and we're hanging out with Miss Gabrielle Union. How are you today? I'm great. Uh, your new movie, tell us about it. Uh, Perfect Holiday, it's basically about um, different people trying to find a little bit more balance in their lives, okay. certainly around the holidays. You got the character of Jay Jeezy, uh, who's you know uh, a rap superstar kind of trying to take over the world, but maybe shirking his parental duties. Jay right. Jeezy, Jay Jeezy, hello, hello. Hey. Um, boss, what about your, your, your Christmas album? Come on, man, you sweating me again? Christmas album, look, we're gonna use the song right there. What, what I love Ho Ho Ho's? No, 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 the one? the one right there, yeah. That's the one we're using, yeah, that one. Let's see if I got this right. We're using I Saw Mommy Captain Santa Claus. You've got my character of Nancy, who's, uh, you know, recently divorced from Jay Jizzy, and, and I've got three kids, and I put all of my energy, time, hopes, dreams, everything into my kids. I've saved nothing for myself. We've been sitting here like ninnies for, for what, what, an hour? And for what? I may be a housewife, but I am not that desperate. Mm. And then you've got Morris Chestnut's character of Benjamin Armstrong, who's aspiring to be a singer-songwriter, just trying to get his foot in the door and hasn't really left a lot of you know, space or time in his life or anything else. And I, my, my daughter overhears me say, all I want for Christmas is a compliment. And uh, that's sort of what gets the whole ball rolling. Excuse me, can you put this with the rest of my stuff? You are a very attractive woman. Yeah, I've seen the film and I really enjoy it. I think it's fun for holidays. So what attracted you to this particular role? You know what, uh, literally I was I was laying on a beach in Miami, uh, hanging out with my girls and, and uh, Latifah and Chuck Kim, her, her uh, business partner called and they were like, we got the, the, the best script for you, oh my God, you, you gotta do it, da da da. And uh, I was like, describe it to me. They're like, you're a, a single mom with three kids. I was like, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I thought you were gonna say like, it's like set it off two and I was gonna kill, kill some people right. and rob a bank. But right. I was like, I don't wanna be a mom. The second you become a mom, like you can't go back and, and it's too hard and, and uh, it's hard enough for me as it is without you know, aging myself. And they're like, no, 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 I think it'd be great to show people another side of you. So after I read the script, I agreed. Absolutely. I think it was an interesting choice too because I think this is like the first time you've played a mom. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, with and, kids that old, yeah. But if you look at the the range of movies that you've you've been in, you've played a lesbian and running with scissors. You've been high school cheerleader. You know, all the way up to a single mom, and then you've played girlfriends and wives um, across the board. But since your breakout role and bring it on, you've also chosen to do edgier films, independent films. This is a conscious choice to kind of provide the contrast, or uh, what informs your decision to do that. Just what I like, what I respond to. Like, I, li I like to film movies I want to see myself. You know, my favorite kind of movies, obviously romantic comedy. Okay. I think that's reflected in my choices, but I also like to see some edgier, darker things. Um, and so, you know, I, I chose a, a film called Neo Ned a few years ago. I played a, a girl who believed she was a, a Nazi. Mm. Um, you know, clearly it's a stretch. Um, you <laughs> know, uh, I did a, you know, a film called Constellation with a good friend of mine, Jordan Walker Perman, uh, just because I loved his work and I wanted to be a part of his process. So I choose things just, you know, to, to, depending on what appeals to me on that particular day. What's your dream project? What would you love to play next? <laughs> as, a, as a black actress, as my dream project is, uh, is, is, is just any work. Mm. Um, work is so hard to come by. Um, I, I just like to do things that challenge me, mm. things that my family can be proud of, mm. things that I can be proud of, mm. and, that, and that the check clears. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, like, like you know, the, the, the check doesn't bounce. Mm. Um, I, I wish I had the luxury of saying, you know, and one day I want to do this, and, mm. and the way I've, I've figured out how to do that as an actor is to also produce, right. and option films, and, and, and um, you know, option books and articles, so that's what we've been doing. Excellent, I, I was gonna say you were featured recently on the cover of Essence, and I was reading the article and all three of you, you, Nia, and Sanaa were mentioning that um, there aren't a lot of people writing those roles for women of color. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question, outside of producing, are you thinking about maybe stepping into the role of writer sometime during your career, maybe to create those opportunities? No, 
I <laughs> okay. I like to. I, I know. I know the, the lane I'm in, and and uh, I believe a producer is the hat I should be wearing. Excellent. I have great organizational skills, and I also know how to recognize great writing. I'm. I like. I write like essays, like affirmative action. Is it just a farce? Um, okay. You know, like I, that was like okay. my last thirty page, you know, essay. Okay. Um, so I, I tend to write more um, socio sociological type, right, um, right, right. you know, pieces. Um, final thoughts on the movie, upcoming projects. Final thoughts on the movie. I think um, there's there's not there's a ton of movies that are gonna be out around Christmas, but there's there's only one movie that you can take the whole family to. I'm talking about when you gotta go pick up grandma from the home, her and her friends, <laughs> down to the toddlers, and when there's only one movie that's appropriate for the whole family, and everyone's gonna walk out of there feeling happier and lighter and warmer than when they started. So that's what I want to say about a perfect holiday, December 12th. Uh, I also have um, Starship Dave coming out with Eddie Murphy. Okay. Uh, end of May, and I'll be doing a few episodes on Ugly Betty, playing Vanessa Williams' conniving, mysterious sister. Nice, nice. All right, well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thank you very much to Gabrielle Union, Morris Chestnut, and Faze on Love. We'll see you in two weeks. This is Real Black. This is just a wish without you. It's I mean, he's a decent-looking man. Nah, listen, I'm talking about science, the science behind this, man. Look at him, man. He's coffee bean black. Women love a coffee bean black balladeer. Milk white uh, turtleneck don't hurt neither. And a caramel hat makes me hungry. Yeah, it makes you want to have a Reese's cup or something, know what I mean? Mm hmm Women like Reese's cups. Yeah, you look like cookies and milk. That's what we should call them, cookies and milk. Cookies and milk, that's, you know what? That's better than peaches and herb. Cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. Yeah, there's two of them, but it's just him with the yeah. milk shirt. We released a CD. It'll have one free chocolate chip cookie with each CD. Call it Munchies. Munchies, yeah. That's the name of his album. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Six string deer on sled on 22. The TV's in the back. It's the perfect Christmas. Last year. What? It's the perfect Christmas. And I don't need no gear. All I need, all I need is six string deer. So what y'all think? Sounds like a spiritual, it's like an old spiritual boss. Oh yeah, I'm sure all the saints was thinking holy, holy, holy with the nasty booty shaking scene. That's so spiritual. Yeah. Right, Wilder. Not sexy. Like this. Put him on your back.